hi 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 hello good afternoon everyone welcome to part three of this three part series on the stain of stigma in our community my name is maria banga and i am founder of the association hope for the abuse and the battered and i was doing a project you know on the stain of stigma in our community and I decided to do these action steps, you know, host these webinars so that we could look at it together. I have had two before, um, one with um, Mirabel Sonke, a very dear big sister of mine, founder of the association, the Network for Solidarity, Hope and Empowerment. And we looked at everything about, uh, we looked at several things about stigma, different areas from which stigma can originate and all of that. And um, last Wednesday, I hosted uh, Mark Julien, who is the founder of Pure Hope, another organization um, I collaborated with. And we looked at our lived experiences and we really got practical. And I want to continue today um, by hosting um, Foto Marinus Fotabo. He is um, a classmate of mine from secondary school, so we come from way back. And um, he's the founder of Reach the World Organization. And we are just going to go kind of more technical, but we are also going to stay practical and we are going to make uh, consistent recommendations, right? So um, without further ado, I see him already in the background. In the meantime, you can answer any of the questions you see that pop up. You can leave your, your answers and your thoughts and everything in the comment section. I already want to appreciate everyone who has participated either during the live stream or later on, either publicly or privately, I am just so blown away. I didn't know people could be so concerned about this. It is really a canker worm in our society. And so I'm so excited to bring my, I call him my boo. I'm so excited to bring him on. Hello? Hello? Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Are you muted? Uh-uh, I can't hear you. You're muted. Can you check if you're muted? Can you hear me? I'll take you backstage and then I'll bring you back when you are sure that the volume is good. I seriously cannot hear you. Try again. Go out and come back in. When coming in, unmute your microphone and your video, Papa Beck you. Oh, you are going to participate by typing. Uh -huh, he has gone. You see the network. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was going to be great where he is, but um, I don't know. So while waiting for him to um, come back, go check out what is happening with his, um, with his network and everything, right? Um, please, if you join, kindly share um, this topic doesn't seem to be one of those trending topics in our community, although it affects us a lot. But um, gradually, gradually, you know, the more awareness we raise, the more um, interest people will have in not only participating, but in speaking up, speaking out, sharing our lived experiences and um, helping people out in one way or the other, especially by connecting them to associations like mine and, and, and Marinus and uh, Mark and uh, Grandson Bell. There are many, sometimes like a rewelcome, you know, because stigma comes from several angles and it's a good thing to, um, you know, find some support when you have to deal with any of these things. Um, I don't know where Marinus is. I don't know what's happening to his microphone. But I am just going to um, 
read a few of the things that I might have read before, but uh, I just want to share with us. Um, because the question is, what is stigma? What is stigma to you? So you can uh, leave your answer in the comment section. Well, the classic textbook definition of stigma is a mark or sign of disgrace, which distinguishes someone from the rest of society and diminishes their worth as a person. That's from the Central Resource Manual of the Canadian Commission on Mental Health 2012. So that's the classic definition of stigma, a mark or sign of disgrace. And already hearing that, we can start to think about the few times or the times in life when we have felt like we have a mark of disgrace or we have a sign of disgrace. I remember back there when I was pregnant, you know, out of wedlock um, in 2002 or early 2000, January 2003, to be candid. I, I know when I got pregnant, on the 1st of January 2003. Okay. Back then, um, it wasn't just like today where people are even celebrated for getting pregnant or well luck and all of those things. Now, it was a disgrace. Some families will actually reject you and beat you up or those kind of things. So, wow, his video is off. What are we going to do with this man? Hello? What's happening to your phone? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? You are going to participate by typing, oh my boo, what has happened now? Oh la la. Okay, but I'm, I'm not going to stigmatize you. I'm just going to ask you to please go and check your microphone. Ah, oh, my goodness. Ah, I would have really loved for us to start this thing properly and uh, with all of that. But whenever he joins, uh, we, are going to, we are going to jump into that. Please, if you see this question and you have anything you want to share, kindly post your comments in the comment section, right? And I'll put it on the screen and we are going to discuss it, right? What is stigma to you? So um, the origin of stigma refers to a mark that was cut or burned into the skin of criminals, slaves, or traitors in order to visibly identify them as blemished or morally polluted persons so that people should avoid them. These individuals were to be avoided or shunned, particularly in public places. So you can see how uh, a stigma has been this thing about um, shaming people, shunning people, uh, because these people are a source of disgrace or they have something on them or some illness or something has happened to them that is so disgraceful. So um, we, 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 even without a physical mark, we have this mark in our mind that when you see this person, you just have to run, you have to call them out, you have to shame them, be it online or offline, you know. You, you have to do all of those kind of things. You even have to write about them, but mouth them. You have to let the whole world know that this person has this mark of disgrace. Wow. Stigma is also understood as a complex social process of labeling, stereotyping, ordering, devaluing and discriminating against and involves wow, interconnected wow, wow. cognitive, emotional, and behavioral components. So stigma is also understood as a complex social process of labeling, stereotyping, ordering, devaluing, and discriminating. Wow. Labeling, you label somebody, look at that one. Look at that one, look at that one, look at that one, look at that schizophrenic, look at that bipolar, look at that PTSD girl, look at that prostitute, look at that this, look at that that. So you label them, you stereotype them. People from the Northwest, 
that means everybody from the Norway's is people from the Norway's. One person from there was done something, everybody from there is trouble. Or people from the Southwest, or, 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 or girls like that, or boys like that, stuff like that. That's stereotyping. Ordering, you know, those people, these people, born again people, Catholics, these people, those people. And because we do all of that now, we devalue them and we discriminate against them. You know, people with different sexual orientation, different religion, different all of that. I don't know where my friend is and what is it with the network today. I can't imagine that for our tech series, we are going to have this much problems. Because for part one and two, we didn't really have this much problems. I really hope it works out this time. Hello? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I don't know where you are. I seriously don't know where you are. It's terrible. You know, you can send me a chat to explain what you want to explain. I seriously cannot hear you. And um, I don't want to be frustrated about it, but um, it's so sad. I don't know if I'm going to stop it and do another one or what. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Anyway, let me keep let me keep um, elucidating. Let me keep explaining um, what I got from my research. Why hoping that um, he can join us, stuff like that. But the main question, the one I just threw out to you now is, what is stigma to you? What is stigma to you? So, before we go to the to what causes stigma in the community. Uh, 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 Let me just read some more, right? What I have here. Stigma is a major barrier that prevents Stigma is a major barrier that prevents people from seeking help. It also impacts care, treatment, and recovery from a mental health or addiction problem. people living with a mental illness even people who have been through um, some situations like domestic abuse uh, uh, sexual violence uh, uh, you know addiction problems and all of these things uh, who have had like maybe even miscarriage or who have lost a child and um, all of those, those things that we find weird even people with illnesses that cannot be easily explained. Even rheumatoid arthritis. Even and people didn't talk about it. And people with HIV AIDS, for example, people living with HIV AIDS were stigmatized, ostracized, were shunned, were shamed. So all of those things, it's not only mental illness, you know. But yes, these people say, and I'm one of those people, right, that the stigma they face is often worse than the illness itself. Just the thoughts about what people will say makes me even more sick than actually when I have a crisis or when I'm triggered and all of those kind of things. So, um, what causes stigma? Do you have any idea what causes stigma?
fear of the unknown illness or fear of relating to somebody who has been through stuff and who can be attracting now some um some chastisement so if you sympathize or empathize with this person then you are going to be black sheep in the community so you also stigmatize this person that is why um some attributes of stigma uh, will include negative and unfavorable attitudes you unfriend them on social media you stop talking um to them or about them or you start talking about them um that's a negative attitude right um you go digging all kinds of things into their past right uh what can i say you see a post about them you are the first person to leave a derogatory comment under that post you make sure that they know that they have been such a disgrace there's no way you can relate with them there's no way you can talk to them anymore there's no way you can say anything good about them again there's no way you can forgive them there's the, i mean those are what negative attitudes are unfavorable attitudes are and another attribute of stigma is that your behavior of course starts to change for the worse so what causes stigma in my opinion is um fear of being um you know also stigmatized by the community so because you fear being stigmatized as standing with this person who is such a disgrace in the community you also join the one going to stigmatize them to talk poorly about them to write all those caricature posts on social media to insult them to say some kind of thing that will attract you followers you know you prefer to have those followers than not and then um you see how other people are also behaving towards this person you know so you want to belong now you don't want people to think that you are also a black sheep or you are a church person or one of those things so you um have all those negative behaviors let me try again to see maybe if you leave your camera off maybe i don't know please when you join you see any of the questions in the comment section just answer leave your thoughts i really appreciate that let this thing be a community thing let's not only be quick to go and comment where people are being denigrated people are being insulted people are being all of that oh la la finally finally, finally yes okay. how are you then then yes i'm doing good. i'm doing good. readings to viewers to viewers to I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad by sister will be sister will be very much very much very much for for it was well, and I'm glad, and I'm glad that we did. That we did. That we did. That we did. 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 We I'm the one who was frozen now. Oh la la. If you can hear me just be talking. But I I I can't see what's going on anymore. It's frozen. I hope it comes back. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness the network
I'm going to take myself out and bring myself in again. It's not even going. What's happening? Oh my goodness. Something is happening. I'm sorry. So unfortunate. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm back. Oh, la la. Papa, please now let's let's try to continue. It it was not so good when you were talking. Great deal. I'm not getting you, Mac. I'm not getting you, Mac. I was saying that when you were talking, it wasn't so good. I want to give for my table. Hello? Can you get me now? Hello? Yeah, but I cannot I'm hear my guest. Oh, my I'm goodness. I can get you. Why are you not getting me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, let's get into the topic now. We are already 22 minutes can gone. You, can you, yeah? Can you, can you mute yourself? Can you, can you mute yourself? I'm not muted. None of us is muted. You talk. You. You. I'm not muted. Talk. I was talking about stigma and I was talking about what causes stigma in the community uh, and, and some of the attributes of stigma. And um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. You came in, well, all this network, uh, I don't know if you probably are the... Uh, Introduce yourself, but we cannot go back to all of that. Ah, uh, it's your mic that has a problem, not me, oh, because my my friend is saying in the comment section that she can hear me. So I don't know what is your own mic's problem. Okay, well, let him go. So um, I, have, I have talked some about stigma, and um, I am using our own kind of examples, right, to really um, explain it. And um, stigma manifests itself through biases, right? Um, distrust, when you don't trust the other person. Stereotypes, as we have mentioned, fear, embarrassment, anger, and avoidance. So somebody will be avoiding you because they are stigmatizing you. And they, they're like, you know, like now if somebody has COVID, say, now nah, I cannot even go there. Even if you go and stand in front of the adult, no, they have COVID. I mean, when COVID just started, when the pandemic just hit, when people even died from COVID, I think they were buried immediately and wrapped up like some mummies and stuff. The family wasn't even allowed to go near the body and stuff. I think it has changed today. Um, and I remember once one lady had a... Uh, she had had COVID and she shared it on social media. Oh my goodness, hell let loose. People were insulting her. People were saying she's lying. People were saying, oh, so she's proud to have had COVID. It was like, ah, COVID was the worst thing anybody could ever have. Like people brought it upon themselves and stuff. Today, people have COVID and they talk about it. And, you know, I have a friend now. Uh, I also went to school with her. She has COVID and she's doing a live. She's sharing 
I update and people are like, no, don't say what's wrong with you. Why? Why can't I be free to say I have COVID? Why can't I be free to say I'm HIV positive? Why can't I be free to say I live with post-traumatic stress disorder? Why? That is, you're ostracizing me, you're avoiding me, you're trying to shame me just because you're afraid to identify with me like, ah, you know that mad woman, you know that prostitute. You know that crazy one. You know that this. You know that that. She's faking it, like the, uh, a suicide. No, say no. She's a drama queen. She likes to 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 dramatize like that. She's not this spirit. How do we know that she's not this spirit this time around? Even if she had done it before or not. So sources of stigma. Because my question here is, have you or anyone you know been a victim or been affected by stigma? You know, you mustn't use your personal experience. You can, oh, you can even use and put the name of some source or story or you know somebody who, it doesn't matter. But I think that many people, many people in our community, but this whole thing of, no, I don't want to say my thing. I don't want people to shame me. Like, I, I, I mean, I attended a webinar. I was a speaker there on uh, gender-based violence, domestic abuse. And I was using my, my own story, right? And they were like, oh, Marie, whoa, you're so courageous. What really encourages you to use your story? And I was like, yeah, it's liberating. It's healing. I don't want to live with that shame anymore. Shame of what? I don't want to be, you know, pretending fake life and all of those things. No. So I will use my lived experiences. So I'm not even going to talk about somebody who has been affected. I will first talk about me, myself. And I talked about that um, last Wednesday with Mark. That was in part two. Yeah, because stigma leads others to avoid living, socializing, or working with, relating to, or employing people with mental illnesses and or addiction. You know, huh? the day they know in the company that you have a mental illness and you're taking your medication, or even that you have you know, COVID, you cannot even have COVID and be employed anywhere right now. They'll send you home immediately. You know, or... The, the, there's a lot of ways people are stigmatized a lot of ways and they limit this person stigma limits this person now you know from seeking help from speaking out or from speaking up and living because i feel so bad i feel judged i feel shamed i feel you know i feel ostracized i even feel less than i feel like oh you know when i was writing the you know, the, the introduction to my brother's book, my brother's journey from genuine to simple to battling with his mental illness and coping with his loss. I said that in my country, and that is true. People who said they're going to that family to see if there's mental illness or madness in that family. So I was like, ha, ah, if my brother had been, they had known that my brother had this mental illness, who would have married me or any of my sisters, right? Because they would have said, ah, oh, madness once in that family. So they stigmatize the whole family, not even the one person who has the mental illness. Like, for, for real, what is that? And when you stigmatize this person, this person also stigmatizes themselves. They feel bad about it, you know, so they, they isolate themselves more. So it's not just a COVID lockdown thing or mandatory isolation or whatever you call it. It is they themselves isolating themselves, refusing to go out. I have been in my house like since Friday last week. I've been working from home. I've just been here. It's not because um, I'm isolating myself for say, per se, but it's because I don't want to go to my office. My people come into my office and begin to talk to me about their cases and all of that. And I have work to do, you know, but some other people, it will be because they don't want to see anybody. Because once people start seeing them pass, maybe if you have a physical mark on you or stuff like that, they are going to now start pointing at you, start murmuring about you. You know, like I have this, my friend, Ekema. He tells me that he feels like when he goes to his city of Boya, people look at him, even if he's not sick at that time, he doesn't have any signs of distress, but they already know his history. So they're isolating, they talk about it, they say, eh, that I want another Makolo Chris man that, you know, stuff like that. Even if people don't say it loud anymore, once you see them and they turn their eyes, you already feel inside you that, of course, that, 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 they're talking about you, or as you're entering into some place, they stop talking. You just tap in and they were talking about you. You know, so that is what stigma does, and it's so challenging. 
and both to you, to the family, even to the community. In some countries, they really take this so seriously and are really putting into place structures to address it and their laws and all of that. But in my country, for where it's like uh, maybe I'm the first person to start talking too much about these things. So yeah, keep talking your thing there, you know. Gradually, gradually, hopefully one day it's going to be. But you know, people have taken their lives, even in this country, because they have been stigmatized or they themselves, they, they self-stigmatize themselves because of what they have gone through. Maybe a failed marriage and all of those kind of things. You know, maybe your career has not picked up the way you thought it should pick up and people are laughing at you. Uh, maybe whatever reason, for whatever reason. But that is all stigma. Stigma for me is at the foundation of a lot of mental health problems and challenges. And it, it, it helps to keep it in place and make you feel like I'm a loser. You know? And the worst one is that even the church doesn't talk about mental health. So don't even go there. If you go there, they're going to pray for you to remove that evil spirit. And if it doesn't come out, then you are a crackhead, you are not case. And so they send you away. And you, you go round and round and that by the time they have done like 10 churches with you, you are completely mad. Nobody takes time to listen to another person. So sources of stigma are the self, the family, or my table. The society, the healthcare system, the criminal justice system. Go under my jewelry box and take one Where is that one hundred going to? My son is late for basketball practice. Okay. Uh, components of stigma, labeling someone with a condition, stereotyping people who have that condition, creating a division, a superior us group, and a devalue them group, resulting in loss of status in the community, discriminating against someone on the basis of their labels. All of that is so wrong, so wrong. So, you know, you have public stigma, structural stigma, and self-stigma. It is not good at all, it is not good. We have to check ourselves. If we are the ones stigmatizing people, what does that do to you? What good is that to you? How does that help you? How do you feel after you stigmatize somebody? Huh? If you are one of those people, I see them on social media, I don't even want to be friends with any of those people who make a mockery of other people. For whatever reason, I'm not interested in that at all. Because I know how much it can affect somebody psychologically to see them being made a laughing stock like that by people on social media and all over the place. So I try to empathize. I try to, you know, but sometimes if you just try to call somebody to other, hey, they'll come after you. So I simply just unfollow anybody I see you know, doing those kind of things. Because my next question, and the last one that I had here, which is also very important, is what can be done to combat and eradicate this stain of stigma in our community? And I'm asking people to, to leave their comments, to participate. You know, if I was talking about maybe that artist that uh, had this problem last week, or maybe that footballer who was, oh, 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 about that name, about whosoever, and oh, 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 oh. I will have a crowd. But you are talking about things that can affect people like this. They will not. But if you 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 say, okay, well, contact me for free and talk like that, everybody, more, 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 more. But come and participate publicly. No, why? Because they don't also want to be seen as people who can even have any problem. People want to live superficial lives, fake it, pretend, all of that. And then, well, one day they crash. Something happens to you years ago, you don't talk about it. Why are you internalizing it? Why are you keeping that secret? It's haunting you. Whether you talk about it now or later, it will continue to haunt you. So the best thing to do is talk about it. That is why lived experience for me, lived experience sharing is very important. Because stigma can cause you to isolate yourself, have low self-worth. You know, don't, don't go for treatment, don't seek for help. 
you cannot even be employed because you cannot keep a job because well you are being so affected you don't sleep well or you know you've lost all etiquette you don't even know how to behave anymore so and then you get a mental illness so you you don't have a house you become homeless you cannot stay in school because of the illness so you know and all of that you lose friends and family members of course there are people on friend you uh, uh family they reject you but one i heard about one young lady who did an hiv test and she was positive and the family kicked her out immediately we don't want trouble another effect of stigma is bullying this one eh, people on social media are champions they will bully you until bully you write about you put your picture write all kinds of things on your picture ah i saw when that player he wasn't even the only one who missed the penalty but i don't know why he was a scapegoat they wrote on his player wanted on his picture wanted i didn't even know who he was ask somebody why are they writing wanted on somebody's picture the person there is the person a thief say no is that player who missed the penalty i say ah just for missing penalty now that what is all of this and when these things happen you can imagine that somebody can get to the brink and decide to take, take i mean end their lives right that's not that's not fair and then when it happens those very people were bullying you or ostracizing you making a mockery of it or they will be the ones now to start writing all kinds of things on social media and say oh oh my goodness we didn't see this coming why didn't they reach out for help but this young lady reached out for help and people said no nah, she's faking it she has done that several times before and people who want to die by suicide they don't even write they know they don't go and start announcing it on social media they just kill themselves can you imagine other people were even saying okay farewell greet my late mother for me greet my late brother for me what kind of thing is that if they were reading all of those comments can you imagine okay well so i really did a whole research and i spoke to um some founders of some organizations three of them and they gave me some some data and it, i'm not the only person who meets people who have been affected by stigma and stuff like that but i think that the more we come together the more we have this kind of conversations then the more we normalize the conversation we are not ashamed to talk about it you know uh, when covid just came and people were like oh covid covid i said if i just dare have covid eh, from day one to the end of the, the covid people will see me on facebook i will talk about it and it's very funny in our society how we we pretend but we go and watch all those things on youtube i remember this um, american uh, whether it's an actor it's a star whatever it just about we just there about something like that he had covid and he was confining or he was in lockdown with his wife or stuff he was doing live videos and youtube and people were millions of you i'll get what soon so i'm like so we shame our own and then we go there and support other people i watched this show on uh, i used to i don't watch it now because i don't have time red table talk by jada pinkett they talk about all kinds of things there sometimes i go when i want to watch i see they show you how many other people have watched people that you know i see like 20 30 people and i'm like oh okay but if you organize this kind of thing in this country one they will not come two they're going to stigmatize you and call you all kinds of names for that three anybody you invite to that table is a target so you see it is not going to work and that's not fair so one thing we also have to do is stop stigmatizing people it's not just about us we live to experience sharing it but it's also about you community society because i'm not there i'm this other side you stop stigmatizing people because it could be you tomorrow or it could be your mother it could be your father it could be your family person so you laugh at somebody today you don't know what tomorrow holds now for you or for your child or any of those kind of things i know that another thing is that well the public authorities don't take this seriously so we don't have those big campaigns about stigma and mental health like you have for COVID or for AIDS when it was ringing when it was trending now AIDS is no more trending it's COVID that is trending so you see all the campaign billboards everywhere and all of that and um, even when you go to the hospital now I have some friends of the global mental health Pay network they say how in their countries their psychiatric wards have been repurposed as covid centers so people who used to go to the psychiatry well they don't have nowhere to go to anymore there's shortage in medication for those who are on medication so you do what you want to do you know um there's shortage in staff 
How many psychotherapists are there in this, in this city of Douala? Public ones, how many? Private ones, how many? How many psychiatric wards do we have? How many psychiatrists are there in this whole country? For a population of how many people? How many beds are there in the psychiatric ward at the hospital? Uh, what, the only one even, uh, one psychiatric ward, public psychiatric ward in this, in this city of Douala, one at La Quintini. So how do we expect people to even trust the system to help them? And when you go there, how are you received? How are you helped? How are you treated? We also need to keep advocating for the government to do better. Um, lived experience, um, our conscience, our good conscience, um, public engagement, and um, increase in resources. Um, what again, you know, more research. This research that I have done is just very small. I could not do much. I could not cover the whole country. I could not talk to 10 organizations, 15. I was doing it out of pocket, you know. Who is going to fund this kind of research on stigma? What is that? Well, what can I bring to us? You know, stuff like that. So I'm really hoping that although these efforts I'm making it can be just like a job, at least this job is going to have some ripple effect. And some years down the line, people are going to start talking about mental health like they talk about physical health, you know. Just this afternoon, before I got on this webinar to talk about domestic abuse, I just had this physical symptom in my stomach. It was paining. I, I, I sat and I thought about it. I was like, where is this coming from? And then I realized it was the anxiety of revisiting the whole trauma again. But I live with post-traumatic stress disorder. So I, I, I took a deep breath. And then I talked about the experience, you know, when I went live. And people were like, well done, Marie. You are, oh, but in this country, oh. Maybe that thing that Jesus said a prophet is not recognized in their own home country is for real, you know, because uh, elsewhere, oh my God, Maria Banga is something else. But yeah, in Cameroon, but it's not like I'm, I'm doing this thing to get any whether it's recognition and all of that. No, I'm doing this for myself and the memory of my brother for his legacy. And I'm doing this to help one or two other people. That is all, you know, like the most important thing is taking care of my own self. That's why I really advocate for lived experience. Don't sit there and think that because you have a mental illness, you have become a big fool, you don't have anything to say anymore, you can never be productive, you cannot be employed. Yes, I don't even want to be employed. I want to employ myself. I'm working on my own. But you can do something. So don't give up. I think we can stop at that. Um, I want to thank uh, my, my friend for joining. Thank you so much. Um, and any other person who is going to watch this later and leave a comment or two, unfortunately, my guests could not uh, join. I was really looking forward to, but I think that they were in a place with poor network and all of that. But um, I mean, I've done 44 minutes. I'm wrapping up now. I'm just so grateful. And I think that I will really be able to have um, some data, you know, with which to make some serious recommendations, maybe for a bigger project next time. Or uh, who knows? It can affect national policy later on. Okay, so um, thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. And God bless us all.